Hi there and welcome to this tutorial and in this we're going to be looking at some very simple text effects that can get your Photoshop work looking better really quickly and you can use these for magazine design say if you're doing the, the titles on them uh, you could use it for business cards or just generally logo design so we're going to jump straight into Photoshop and I'm working on Photoshop CC so there may be some differences between whatever version of Photoshop you're using and whatever version I'm using but generally the functions that I'm going to be using have been featured since early versions of Adobe CS since about 3, 4 so the chances are you're going to have everything that I've got in this version as well you just might have to look in a little bit of a different place so here I am in Photoshop CC and I'm using the Essentials view so I've just got the basics up and I'm going to go File New and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create International Paper A4 Standard OK and I'm just going to create this document here we're going to just do some logos on this page here so the first thing we're going to do is get the type tool and you know you can always improve the quality of your work if you have some custom types from places like Defont or 1001 fonts however you know there's there's plenty around that you can play around with if you haven't got any custom installed fonts um, and in fact one of my favorites is I'm just going to use impact and what I'm going to do here is just show you the power of just using some layer styles to outline things so what I've done is I've just got the type tool just clicked on the screen here um, I prefer doing just clicking somewhere on the screen and typing rather than if I just undo that and undo uh, if I just apply that control alt z or control z if you're just one step back um, I prefer doing that rather than clicking and dragging because if I click and drag and the font goes outside you can't see it so um, I find it a much better way to start writing just to click and I want to bring my font size up to about 72 and I'm going to choose something kind of blue okay so at the moment this text here I can actually scale this it's essentially a vector style text I can press control T and free transform it to another size and it's not going to pixelate okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to rasterize this layer so I've got the size I want rasterize type and I do that by coming over to the type layer here right clicking rasterize type and now it's become a raster image and what I can do now is just come over to the rectangular marquee tool and I'm just gonna select this R here the second leg and I've dragged around it making sure that I'm working on the right layer control T and I'm just gonna drag that down just to make it look a little bit more custom and maybe I'll do something. I'm working on the fly at the moment, I haven't done this before with this image so we'll see how it goes if you just follow. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double click and I'm going to add a outer there it is, I'm going to add an outer stroke and notice when I tick the box you can see the stroke being added but actually over here the options are not being changed I need to click on the word stroke and then I get the options up here and you get an inside stroke you get a center stroke so it happens right in the middle it goes out and you get an outside stroke as well and that's what I'm going to use an outside stroke I'm just going to enlarge it so the stroke meets all the way around I'm going to choose a darker blue perhaps yeah and click OK and now I've got the effects on this and I want to add another stroke to this as well um, now to do that what I need to do is I need to rasterize this effect so I'm going to right click rasterize the layer style so it's now associated with it I'm going to double click on it 
I'm going to click on stroke. I'm going to choose that inside layer from the color, and I did that. If you just see, by going, I'll do it once more. I click on color, and I get the pipette tool. And I can click on whatever color I want to change it, or I could just change it in here. And I'm just going to increase it, and it's going inside. I want it outside. Okay. I'm going to rasterize that layer style again. So I've right clicked on layer, rasterize layer style again. And then I'm just going to apply, <coughs> sorry, I'm just going to apply the stroke again. So I've clicked on the stroke layer, apply the stroke. Okay. Okay, and there we go. So we've got a nice retro logo. I actually kind of personally preferred it when it was a little bit just simpler with just in there, but you can carry on with this and you can make a really good funky logo there. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you is a cheaty way of doing 3D. Um, some earlier versions of Photoshop but don't have a 3D. Um, so we're going to do a, a fake 3D and what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose, this does work again with a good font like uh, Impact, it's kind of a good large font to work up with and it's thick so with 3D elements um, it does work really well, I'm just going to click and type the word 3D and let's have a big D now I've done this in one of my other tutorials um, Called Storm Tracker. So if you check out that tutorial as well, you'll see it there. So I'm going to enlarge my font up to where I want it. It's always best to go slightly larger as well than you need because you can always shrink it down and it won't pixelate once it's rasterized. But if it, you want to enlarge it and it's rasterized, it will start to pixelate. So there we go, there's our 3D text. What I'm going to do now is press, I'm going to rasterize that layer. So what I'm going to do now is rasterize that layer rasterize type and that allows me to not just change it but if I press control T and hold down control and grab a corner it allows me to create different shapes like trapeziums and things okay so there's a 3D what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate this layer. So control J and that creates a duplicate and you can see it there. And now with that duplicate I'm going to go filter blur motion blur and I'm just going to angle it somewhat and you can see that it's blurring now. So this can be the depth of my 3D. I go to OK and now I press Control J loads of times until it becomes solid. So I've pressed it 23 times on mine and then I press Control E to merge all the layers back. But I've got to take care not to merge back onto my original layer. So I've got my original layer and my copy layer. From here with making sure that it's the copies that I've got selected, I go image, adjustments, brightness and contrast and I can dip it down. I could use the paint bucket tool to give it a completely different colour. That'll do. And it doesn't look very 3D at the moment, although you can see there's perhaps a resemblance of 3D there. But as soon as I grab by left clicking on this layer here and dragging it above this layer, you can see that if I position this correctly now, you've got a 3D layer. And you can come along, double click into the layer style, so double click, left click into this gap here of the layer and I could also add a quick bevel emboss just to make it look a little bit more 3D on that top layer as well. And as I said, if you wanted to, that 3D copy here, if I came along 
Um, I'm going to select the paint bucket tool. I'm going to select this colour here and just fill it. You know, you can change the colour of that layer as well. Uh, here's a nice tip as well. If you want to quickly change without changing between the layers like this, if you right click on any layer, you get the options of what layers are available to be selected underneath that click and you can click and drag those layers. You can also hold down control and select a layer and it will also select it. So it means you don't have to spend so much time in the layers panel over here. Okay, so next up what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how powerful white on white can be with text. So this time, let me get my type tool. And this time I'm going to type the word white, perhaps select a different font. If you want to select fonts quickly and shift through them, if you just click up once you've drawn it and you've highlighted everything by dragging across it, you can use the arrow keys just to flick up and down to find a font that you like. As I go with this one, I'll increase the size a little bit again. Okay. And you'll see that I can add bold to it there as well, just to punch it out a little bit. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make this font white, so I can double click on the T here to make it uh, to select it, or I can just left click and drag across it. Just double click, turn it to white, and now we can't see it. But what I can do is come along to the layer styles again, so I just double click on that layer, and what I'm going to do now is just bevel emboss it. So if I click on bevel emboss. And I can just increase the depth and the size. You can soften the edges around it. I think it's quite good, like um, like that when it's got hard. You could put it so it's inwards, so it goes down rather than up, so it looks like it's been punched into whatever it is you're writing on. And you can chisel it hard as well, so it looks like it's a bit more um, defined around the edges. I can also change the angles, so that's probably a better angle about there, or straight down the middle, like that. Just a little bit off the top, and let's make it a little bit harder around the edges. And I can enlarge it fine because it's still actually a vector text graphic at the moment. So that's three very simple techniques that you could use to create some logos. Um, I hope you found that useful. I'm going to be doing some more logos as well, so I hope to see you back for some more tutorials. Thank you very much.